if there is one technique that I had to attribute to my successes, um, it would have to be cold email. From raising venture capital to closing deals worth hundreds of thousands of dollars to selling companies to, you know, a bunch of different things, most of it has happened through email. And in this video, I want to teach you a little bit about email. And instead of me, you know, teaching you things like email templates, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you the basic idea of sending out emails. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to link you to some resources, uh, which are from our investments, Foxbound in this case, where you can actually go in depth and look at actual different email templates. The thing about email is it's not as effective as before. And the main reason for it is because it's noisy because it's easier and easier for people to send email and get other people's email IDs. It's very easy for people to just blast email emails, right? You can just send out thousands of emails per day. Um, because of which it's become a very noisy channel. But like I told you about these different channels, some channels, they become very noisy and then they drop for a long period of time. And I feel with the noise on email now in a year or two, things would have cooled down. So the environment when it comes to email will be easier to use uh, and there'll be less noise until it you know heats up and goes back up again. So again, you have to know which part of the wave you need to target. But in this video, I'm going to teach you about cold email and Let's get started. So, so far you probably have some leads. You've done a little bit of uh, the lead generation stuff that, that I've told you about. You have some leads. Now you think your product or service might be utilized by these people. You've done your buyer persona. You know that these people are very likely to buy your product or your service. You need to somehow reach out to them and get a meeting with as many of them as possible. And you know, we used to think that this was a numbers game. Right. And in crude sense, it is if you send out hundreds of thousands of emails and you have a 1% conversion rate, then you know, okay, I'm going to get this many leads. Um, and in a crude sense, it's still like that, but you know, there's a way to go from a 1% conversion rate to a four, five, 10, 15% conversion rate. If you are smarter about it, right. And the way to be smarter about it is to personalize every email, find a connect and build a relationship. It's like, Cold email today has become like the SMSs that you get on your phone from, you know, delivery guys like companies like Zomato or Swiggy or, you know, it's just, it's spam, right? It's starting to be spam. If it's not very specific to you, it's spam. But if you get a text message from somebody saying, Hey, um, you know, why don't I heard you need this, 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 is there any way I can help? That looks more genuine. So personalize and the way to personalize email is to know a lot about the person you are emailing and then find some common connects to build a relationship on. So. The goal of an email is to get a meeting, right? Whether that meeting is a demo, you meet them face to face, it's Skype, it doesn't matter. The goal is to get a longer meeting, right? To get that person's attention instead of for 30 seconds or five seconds on an email subject line, you're changing it from five seconds to, you know, maybe an hour, right? That's the goal of a meeting. Busy people don't like wasting time on unclear solutions. Right. If you send me an email saying, I have an idea, I want to discuss the idea with you. I will not even reply to the email. You're wasting my time. Right. So unless you have a clear solution saying, this is what we're going to do. Bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three. Here's some pictures. Here's some traction we've accomplished so far. Um, here's the thing, right? Here's the, here's the central proposition here. Every meeting that I want to go into, I want it to be useful to me. Right. I don't mind helping other people and giving out to other people, but it's just, I don't, I, I, I'm okay with giving out to other people at a distance, right? Things like content, that's okay. But if somebody's going to come and waste my time for an hour where I don't get anything out of it and that person doesn't get enough out of it, it's a waste of time, right? What I have is the ability to help a lot of people. I've generated some capital in my life, but I do not have time, right? And most busy people think like me. In fact, there are people who are much, much busier than me. Every meeting has to be clear and has to have something for them to gain, right? And you believe it or not, you can give out to other people and still gain in return, right? So these people, they're not bad for saying, I don't want to take a meeting with somebody who has an unclear solution. Be clear. And last but not the least, don't ask for advice. You are robbing. It's literally when, when you go to someone and say, can I have one hour of your time because I want advice or 10 minutes of your time, if, but I want advice. And you do that to somebody who's not very successful, then it's fine. But if you do that to a successful person, it's to the successful person, all successful people have an hourly rate in their head. They know that each hour of their time is worth $10,000 or $5,000 or 10,000 rupees. It doesn't matter. In, in my head, I have a fictional hourly rate, 
when I was younger, when I was doing freelance, I actually had an hourly rate. That was $150 to $200 an hour. And today, you know, it's been many, many years since that. So I have an hourly rate. So every time somebody asks me for an hour, what I ask myself is, is this meeting worth at least certain thousand number of dollars? Right? And I ask myself, so every time I get into a meeting and it's worth an, it's an hour long, I think about, okay, does this add at least X no worth of value, which is at least equal to my hourly rate? Right? And most meetings do not fit that criteria. Right. Even if it's five minutes, you can do the math and you can bring it back and say, okay, will this make me at least this much or will this help me add at least this much of value into the world? Right. Because sometimes I'm okay with taking meetings where I don't make anything, but I add value to the world because it comes back later. Right. Helping another person, that person remembers it and it comes back. But a lot of the times when you're going into a meeting, you are asking for something, you are selling something, right? You are asking for advice or investment or, or something like that. You're asking, you're taking right? And when you're taking, you're wasting the other person's time. It's as good as robbing somebody else uh, of their money. I see it the same way. So let's talk about loading the outreach, right? Loading the outreach. And we've gone through this entire process before. Uh, this is the Foxbound dashboard. You can use any competitor tool. Uh, what you do is you create an ID on Foxbound. You just add the leads list like we did in a couple of episodes ago and then you click on the pursuits tab and you can add the outreach we've done all of this process before so you i'm just letting you know that you have to load the outreach now some tips on personalization right 59 percent of people say that website and email personalization influences their shopping decisions 77 percent have recommended chosen or paid more for a brand that provides a personalized experience 78% will only engage with offers if they've been personalized to their previous brand engagements. Think about things from your end. Say you won a marathon recently and someone random online congratulated you suddenly, right? You'd be more likely to engage with that person. So suppose you ran a marathon and you came first and you know, you're getting mails from all these, from Swiggy and Zomato, all the food delivery guys. And they were just saying, you know, this offer, that offer. And then suddenly a guy messaged you saying, Hey, by the way, congratulations on winning the marathon yesterday, right? Immediately you're like, Hey, who's this, right? That's it. It's a human response. It's curiosity because this person knows about you. So show that you know about the other person, do your research. The reason even mild personalization work works, which is, you know, Hey, we went to the same school together is because there's too many generic emails out there. If you think, if you send a generic email and you expect a response, the main reason you won't get a response is because there's just too many people like this. And I said, this is about breaking through the noise. It's about being outstanding. It's about separating yourself from the crowd. And the way to separate yourself from the crowd is to be hyper personalized. So I'll give you some personalization tips, right? I'm just showing you uh, two emails back to back. You probably can't read the email on the left. Let me read it out for you. Uh, the subject line says, marketing service and the text says are you looking for marketing service question mark we are marketingservice.com provide marketing services attaching our deck here that's one email and that's a non-personalized email because there's nothing about the person in it right it's just you're selling marketing services you're just saying marketing services that's that's it right it has nothing to do with the person involved look at the email on the right I found this email on CB Insights. Uh, they posted on their Twitter. I love this email. Just listen to it. Just, I'm going to read it out for you. Hi, Anand. This is a cold email and I'm a summer intern. I'm Indian. You're Indian. And that's pretty rare. I go to Penn. You go to Penn. You went to Penn. Uh, I use an Amex. You used to be a VP at Amex. I've read a book. You've written a book. Want to reach out to you because all of this seems like fate. Thought you should also know that I have an extra bone in my knee and my babysitter's name is Ali. I know you've tweeted that 93.9% .9 of salespeople send sucky emails. So the bar is high, but I'd love the chance to show you how we make these cold emails a little warmer. Been studying your guide daily for two months now and finally mustered the courage to reach out. My internship ends next Friday and blah, 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 blah. But the point is this person has shown a tremendous amount of research and I will always, and I'm telling you always reply to an email with this kind of research. Somebody's done this kind of research. And if the tool or product that that person is selling is valuable, right? And I know that most people who email me are not going to go through this research, right? Then you're not, and, and that's the difference. It takes hard work. Yes. It looks like every email you write takes 40 minutes because you have to do 40 or 30 minutes worth of research, but your conversion rate goes up from one out of every thousand emails answered to 500 out of every thousand emails answered. It is very powerful. It's, it's, uh, it's the way 
I got a, you know, we, we did a partnership with the company called Webflow. Uh, you know, it's the way I got my book published. It's the way, you know, I've raised capital. It's just me being hyper personalized. If I want something done, the reason my conversion rate is better than the next person is because I go in depth. I will literally pick out what they ate for breakfast in sixth grade and say, and send them a picture of that and say, by the way, you know, I used to love this when I was in sixth grade, right? And obviously only if I mean it, right? So, but the point is create a rapo. You have to create a rapo and rapo is created around content, around things that are relatable to that person and your and you, right? So I like to call this limbic resonance and a lot of advertisers are doing it today. We, we try to touch on the limbic system of a person, which is their base emotions, their base needs. So the idea with personalization is relatability. Why should I care about you? You are the one look going using an email or sending messages. Um, it's like knocking on somebody's door. It's like that salesman from uh, the encyclopedia that came to my door and knocked on it. The minute the door is open, he has to quickly tell me why I need, why I, I should buy the encyclopedia, why I should even entertain this person, right? When you send an email, you are knocking on somebody's virtual door, an inbox, right? It's a virtual door and you're sending them something and you have to tell them why it's important for them to spend time on it, right? Seriously, you have to, you have to, there has to be some reason that they should spend time on it, right? And personalization is your number one key that's why it takes when i write an email it takes like 10 15 minutes but i'm doing heavy personalization right for somebody else that would take 40 minutes it would take an hour it doesn't matter but over time you get better and your conversion rate gets so much better so let's talk about follow-ups right here's a uh, image of the positive response rate if you send one email 40 percent positive response rate on that email so as you can see from this image you can't end at one email. You need to keep, keep sending out emails. You need to keep following up. In fact, you, you know, on your seventh email, you'll get 20% response rate, right? It's just, it's just how it is, right? So the same person, you can follow up again and again and again and again and again until finally the person replies and says, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to convert and I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to take that meeting with you. So you can't stop at one email, but don't spam. Don't send an email every day. Send an email spaced out by a particular day. Personalize every email, every outreach on social, every message in every call, or you will lose the people who do, right? If you don't personalize, if you're not sending personalized videos saying, Hey, I, I know you used to love eating, you know, rice and curds when you were in fifth grade. I used to too. I'm, you know, I have these, these, these things that are also relatable to you. And I send you a video of that. If I'm doing things like that and my team is doing things like that and you are not, then we will always close the deals and you will never close the deals. Right. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when everybody personalizes, there's a big market for everybody because I can find the people who I relate to the most. Right. And the people I relate to the most these days are founders of larger companies. Right. Because they go through the same issues that I've gone through. So my personalized emails are always very it's we always I always talk about the struggles of being an entrepreneur. Right. All the challenges that I've been through and they can relate to it. And I can say, look, you know, when you raised your series B, I know this happened. It happened to me too, you know, in this other situation. That's how I build relatability. That's why I'm, it's easier for me to close a fortune 500 CEO or a founder of a bigger company or a founder of a smaller company rather than a sales rep in my team, because I've been through those people's issues. That's why I personalize, right? And the advantage with me teaching you how to personalize is you can find people like you and sell to people like you and, and find people who, who have the same life experiences, right? And that makes for a very, very good market because everybody makes money. It's a, it's a, it's not a zero sum game, right? We should not all be competing for the exact same pie. So how do you structure cold emails? Structuring cold emails, um, you know, I don't want to go in depth over a video because cold emails are more about text. Advanced reading is available in the Foxbound playbook. Foxbound is one of our investments and we've spent considerable amount of time building out this playbook. So take a look at the playbook. It's attached in the resources section. We actually go through email templates get creative when it comes to personalization. There is a tool called Vidyard, right? And this is Vidyard. This is an example of Vidyard, which allows you to create personalized videos. You see this name here, this Sophie here, this is actually AI changing the name, right? You can hold a placard, you can move it around. doesn't matter. The AI figures out what the movement is. And then eventually it can change the name Sophie to whoever's name you're sending it out to. Remember we use the variables in the Foxbound part of the tool. So there are many tools in the market, especially the, the market leaders like sales loft or outreach. You can just find both of these people online, the, both of these companies online. They're very expensive tools, 
when you use these tools and you see uh, a lot of the emails that are sent with them, a lot of the emails that are sent with them have variables, just like in Foxbond. So I can put in the person's first name, I can put in the person's company name. So imagine I'm holding a blank placard and I'm just standing like this and I'm moving it around and you see a person's name, right? And that's your name. Immediately you want to respond because it's relatability, right? And relatability is and personalization is the most important thing when it comes to any any sort of sales today, right? But emails where there's a lot of noise, it's the only way to, to proceed. And let me show you an example of, of this video, right? Let me just show you what this looks like. This is Vidyard. Uh, the play button of customer notion like today. So as you can see, of course, the only thing. Let me just pause this. Makes it easy to create and share videos okay, from all the applications spot. you use every day. Look of at course, this. So as you can the see, thing more the name a video is, is being a printed on there. Video. Stand out and boost engagement by adding personalized right, information done digitally, like but the actually name, you can change it to anybody's name. photo of the person who's watching. And it happens automatically. Because who doesn't like feeling famous? Know exactly when to follow up by getting notified. All right, guys. So that's it for this video. Um, you know, we learned a little bit about cold emails. I want you to go through the resources section, pick out the Foxbond cold email playbook because you there's so much for you to learn. But at the end of the day, you have to craft your own personalized emails, right? You have to really talk about some sort of connection between you and the person you're emailing. Otherwise, you have no business emailing that person. All right. So that's it. That's it for this video. Catch you in the next. Bye bye.